How's it going? It has been just raining cameras around here. This one is another one from one of my favorite camera companies, Foscam. This is a new 4 megapixel indoor or outdoor Wi-Fi security camera. It does have Ethernet, but it's not power over Ethernet. At least it doesn't say that it is. And I don't have a power over Ethernet switch to test it with. So we're going to hook it up as Wi-Fi. One of the most interesting things about Foscam right now is that they are claiming a firmware that does human only motion detection. So somehow it's figuring out that that's a person moving and not the tree branch blowing or a dog or a cat. Wide field of view up to 112 degree viewing angle. Very nice. Long range night vision. This is important. 30 IR lights allow the night vision range up to 66 feet. It's waterproof IP66, aluminum housing. It definitely feels solid. It's nice and heavy. Multiple storage. So they, they'll give you cloud storage. It does have an SD card slot. This one does have an SD card slot. 128 gigabyte is max size. Uh, it is on VIF compatible. That means you can use an NVR that isn't Foscam if you want to. And I want to. Sound detection, two-way audio. Oh, need additional external microphone and speakers. Yes, we'll sh I'll show you the connections for those. It doesn't come with them, but it has connections for them. Time's a wasting. Let's get this thing set up. There she blows. It's a nice bullet camera. I like this style cameras for outdoor use, um, at least so far. I haven't had any of these on the inside of the house yet. Definitely solid. It's got a nice sealed up location here for the SD card. It's got an extra Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, it's got Allen wrench locking screws. You can get a good look at all those night vision LEDs. One of the very interesting parts about this particular camera is the way that the connections work. So this is for power and it comes with an external power supply. It's probably 12 volts. Yes, 12 volt, one amp power supply. So you plug that in there, plug it into an outlet wherever you're putting this camera. Um, here is the Ethernet port. And again, like I said, I don't think it's power over Ethernet. I think it's only Ethernet. And right now I don't have a way to test it. So we're just going to have to assume that my assumptions are right. <laughs> so the red and the yellow connector here are for audio in and out. So if you wanted to include uh, two-way communication or even just one-way communication, you would need something to connect to these, a microphone and speakers. Probably says somewhere which one is microphone and which one is speakers, but I can't find it. Wouldn't be too hard to figure out which is which, and you wouldn't break anything in the process of trying. And then this is the funniest thing of all. This is the reset button. Just seems funny to me. I don't know if it's supposed to attach to something else. Maybe this is standard on other kinds of cameras like this. I don't know. Catches me kind of funny that that's where the reset button is. Anyways, those are the connections. There's the camera. Let's power it up and see what it can do. Now it's on. Okay, I heard some clicking. This is not pan tilt at all. Everything that you set here, you set and tighten and leave. So this one's not spinning around or doing anything, which... As much as I think it's cool and I do like it and I do use it in some cameras, most of the time you don't use the pan tilt. You just point the camera somewhere and you look at the image that comes through and that's it. You're done in most situations. Okay. Oh, it does want us to set this up using the Ethernet and then set up the Wi-Fi after. So let me grab an Ethernet cable and get that connected. Now connecting the Ethernet... It says it will give you an audible announcement that says it's wired connection successful if you have it connected to an audio output, which I do not. So we'll just move on to the setup in the app, assuming that it did connect to the wired network successfully. Doing a lot of assumptions this time. All right. I already have the Foscam app set up, so we'll open that and we'll go here to adding a new device. And it will be a, I guess this is a 
IP camera. Plug it in. Ooh, scan the QR code on the camera. Okay, I can do that. Sweet. Ooh, that was easy. We're going to call it doorway. Okay, this is again very important if we want to use the RTSP on VIF compatibility function. So we're going to call this one, we're going to call it front door. Because that's where I'm going to have it pointed. Okay, there it is. That's nice. Okay, it's nice and big there. We can't really judge this image because my first thought is, boy, that looks grainy for, you know, Ultra HD. But I think the reasoning is because this is streaming to my phone, which is then streaming to the computer. So hopefully that's uh, why. But maybe there's some settings in here we can fix to make it even better. What does this say? Ooh, you have the intelligent human detection feature activate for free. Wait, wait. Through the AI intelligent algorithm, only the human conditions of use. The feature is exclusive to the cloud paying users. That's disappointing. Uh, devices that have purchased cloud services or some special models can activate this feature directly for free. Human detection and motion detection cannot be used at the same time, and only one detection type can be enabled at the same time. If I hit activate for free, is that going to sign me up for the cloud for a certain period of time? Or is this particular camera, maybe this particular camera is one that you can do it for free because I didn't sign up for the cloud. And it certainly was advertising that. Alarm only when a human is detected. I have no idea how that works but it's stinking cool. So we're going to turn it on. <laughs> it does say it's functional HD down there. Very nice. Now, once we've got that set up, which was ridiculously easy, <laughs> the next step here is to transition this from wired connection to Wi-Fi connection. Because where I'm going to mount it, there's no Ethernet to connect to. Tap the gear. Network says no Wi-Fi configuration now, but we're going to change that. I wonder if the app already has my information. Nope. I think it's messed up because I have my phone set on super huge. I can't see because I'm blind font. This does say that it only works with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi frequency, not 5. Not a big deal. I assume if there was a firmware update, it would show me here. You have a cloud storage service. Eight hour video history. Activate now. So it looks like I did not activate this on accident to try and get the human detection. Best I can tell, that's still true. This is a Foscam, so it should be pretty easy to get it set up with Blue Iris. And what do you know? I've already got Blue Iris open right here. So I did need to reboot it after I switched from Ethernet to Wi-Fi. So put the Wi-Fi information in, grab the right network, disconnect the Ethernet cable, and then reset it. And now it's now it's working, now it's live. And it's disconnected from the Ethernet, so perfect. We're going to do it like this. We're going to tell it to set up a new camera. The camera full name is going to be front door. And the short name is going to be front door. I'm so original with these things. It's just clever. Clever. Enable audio? No. Motion detection? Yes. Let's see if it'll find it. If we do a discover here, it doesn't look like it's discovering anything. Once again, we're going to use the Foscam equipment search tool. Here it is. Download software tools. Right here. Equipment search tool for Windows. So I've downloaded it should be here search tool right here search tool.exe shows me two cameras 113 and 121 r4s is the camera i set up last time so this one is 13. perfect and this is the g4 now we can go back to blue iris and we hit the set up new camera button here 
And then we're going to copy from an existing camera. That was the theater. And then we're going to go to video, configure, and we're just going to change a couple things. We're going to change this IP address to 113. And then we're going to change this. And I think that's right. We go here. Let's see if it can find it. Yes. Detected. Done. Okay. Close. And that should do it. It's looking good. Yay! Oh, it's just always worth celebrating when it works. Handsome fella. Looks pretty good. Last time I did a FOSS cam review like this, I showed you how to set it up in Blue Iris. But what I didn't do was show you how to set up a camera that is in Blue Iris in Home Assistant. So, thanks to Tapper Crimp, we're going to follow this little guide here and do just that. So we're going to go to Blue Iris and under Settings and Web Server and then Enable LAN Access. All right, I can do that. So these are the steps to get the video feed from Blue Iris into Home Assistant. Go to Settings. First thing you have to do is create a user. When you create a user, you're going to give it a name and a password. And then the easy thing to do is just set it as administrator. But there are some options here if you only wanted to have it accessible to certain cameras or only through LAN. You can pick some of those things. But I just made myself administrator. Once you've done that, you just hit OK. And here's my user. In web server, set this interface to the IP address of the computer that you're running Blue Iris on. So for me, that's this one, 28. And then set a port, whichever port you want. And then when you click OK, this will update. So I clicked OK. And then I went back in there again. You can copy this because you're going to need it in a minute. To test it, I'm going to just open this in a web browser. So we paste that URL in. Then at the end of that URL, we're going to put forward slash MJPG and another forward slash. And then you need the short name of one of your cameras. That's the name that's here in the corner. So let's do theater this time. So I'll just type theater, case sensitive, I would expect. Oh, and normally the first time you do this, it will ask you for the user and password. That's when you give the user and password that you set up here. But then you've got essentially an HTTP feed that's only accessible internal to your network that you can log into and see what's going on. Now we can take that and using this format, we can set this up in Home Assistant. So here we go. Visual Studio Code, configuration.yaml, camera section. We're just going to copy this. We can't have two camera headings. And my spacing is off. Now, now here, we take out this and we put in we put the IP address of the computer where you're running Blue Iris. That's the port that you selected, uh, MJPEG, and then the camera that we want. Name. I will go into my secrets file and set up Blue Iris username and Blue Iris password. Someone asked me about the secrets file, and the basics of the secrets file is. It's a file called secrets.yaml, and inside it, the format is some word and then the password that you want to keep secret. So in this case, the word, I'm going to use one word, is going to be VI username. So it's just safer to copy and paste so that I don't make a typo. So I paste that in. And then I put in my Blue Iris username. And then the next line is BI password. And then I put my BI password. Okay, authentication basic, that should do it. So we're gonna now go into Home Assistant. 
That's a good sign. We should get a new camera when it comes back up. There it is. <laughs> okay. Very mucho excelente. Uh, one thing left to do, and that is add this to Lovelace. I have a camera page here. We'll do picture entity. And if you do camera view live, then it will always be live. See that? That's the difference. So if you take out camera view live, then it will only be live when you click it. So it will update. Yeah. So it'll update every few seconds. So that's probably good enough. And then this is uh, the live feed once you click on it. But if you want it to be live all the time, then you add the camera view live, camera view live line like that. One thing we didn't check yet was the uh, night vision on this. So let's turn off the lights. It'll be interesting to see when it's outside how far it goes, but boy, it sure does light up the room. Okay. Nice. Very nice. Now, I just need to install it. Well, that's it. Another good FOSS cam. Pretty easy to set up, works well, good pictures, reliable connection. That's about all I need. And since Father's Day's coming up, maybe I should get a few more of these. That's it. Thanks. Adios.